I don't know about y'all, man, but NBA free agency, the first week, has been a wild, wild ride. And it's just why I just love the NBA, man. It's why I love it. It's my favorite sport because you always have that drama during the, the, the fall, during the summer. You know, the NBA never sleeps. It's always something happening. It's always some rumor going around. You know, it's always craziness, man. And, you know, and, and, and that's why it's my favorite sport, man. But, you know, it, it's been a well first week for a free agency, especially with the, you know, Kevin Durant news. But also, too, for, for, some, some, for some re-signings and, and signings, you know, that, that might not be, you know, on the scale of like a Kevin Durant just coming out and saying he want to trade. But, you know, trades and re-signings, that's, that's you know, and, and, and impactful for teams. So, you know, in this video, I want to kind of recap, you know, this fair to see and also talk about, uh, you know, what it all means, you know. Um, but if you're an NBA fan, if you've been enjoying this fair to see, man, leave a like on the video for that, man. Uh, subscribe to the channel. It helps out the channel a lot. Helps me grow and, and get out to more people who love, uh, you know, NBA content like this. So hit that like and subscribe. Um, to the channel man and leave it a comment what what has been your favorite you know signing so far you know what was signing or, or, or re-signing um what, what were you expecting or what or what certain surprises so far this first week of free agency you know kind of you know surprise you so leave it in the comments as well but but man uh man i gotta take a deep breath man the the 2022 edition of NBA free agency began with a typical flurry of moves that we all know, um, but it was somehow finalized in the first 30 seconds of the negotiation window. But things have finally it slowed down, giving us time to reflect on all the movement surprises and Oscar-worthy Brian Windhorst memes. <laughs> There's one crucial name everyone is waiting to see move, and it rounds with it rounds with Devin Curran. <laughs> we all know and once that happens it will surely set off a chain reaction that will shape the league for the 2022-23 season that's why I feel like you know um, so far to this point you know everything it's kind of been slowing down you're not really hearing too many things because of the Kevin Durant news if you don't get the Kevin Durant news a lot of all the trades and all the deals that's already probably was already in place would have been out and came out by now but for right now the league is on ice until we finally get um, a resolution to the Kevin Durant situation. Um, but for now, man, let's take back and look at, I came up with six things I feel like we learned from the first week of NBA free agency. It pays to be a superstar. Within hours of the official start of the 2022 free agency on Thursday, NBA teams had already committed a total of over one billion to five players. Yes, one billion to five players. Jokic, the Nuggets, he signed a five-year, $270 million, uh, most lucrative contract in NBA history. Bradley Beal re-signed with the Wizards on a five-year, $251 million deal. Um, Carl Anthony Towns re-signed uh, four years, $224 million. Booker re-signed four years, $224 million. And John Morant re-signed on a five-year, $193 million um, deal. Not much later, the Pelican Zion Williamson agreed to a five-year extension that could reach $231 million with incentives. Remember, he's played 85 games, including no playoff appearances in three seasons. Um, Darius Garland, who has yet to hit the 70-game plateau in a single season, agreed to an almost identical um, deal with the Cavaliers. For this, the lesson is simple. However trite it's become, the NBA is a superstar league. And it's nearly impossible to win without one. Curry, Giannis, LeBron, Kawhi, Durant. Those are just the last five title winners. To find a team that last won a title without any player you can conceivably consider a superstar, honestly, you got to go back to the 2004 Detroit Pistons. So it's been a while um, as far as the team, you know, winning without, you know, you know, like all town you know, players or whatever, uh, like all oh, these big time superstars. It's been a while. You gotta go back to, to the Pistons. Trades are the new free agency. Close your eyes and think back to the summer of 2017. It was a simple time. NBA fans worldwide were glued to the phones, laptops, and TVs, waiting to find out where coveted free agency Gordon Hayward would take his talents. First, it came out that he was signing with the Boston Celtics. 
Then that report was refuted. Then finally, on the 4th of July, exactly five years ago, Hayward revealed in a Players' Tribune essay that he was, in fact, heading to Boston. What a thrill ride to, to remember. One year earlier, uh, Kevin Durant made a free agency decision that imploded the NBA universe and produced a lot of memes that's as, revel that's as relevant as, you know, today. It was fun. In recent years, however, free agency has lost the majority of its sizzle. Designated player extensions and contracts known as the Supermax were designed to give teams an advantage in returning their own superstars. The advantage has become so great, however, that it makes zero financial sense for the player to sign elsewhere. Take Bill, for example. Had he elected to change teams this offseason and uh, spurned Washington's five-year $251 million offer, his contract with another team could only reach the ballpark of four years, $185 million. You have to be thoroughly disgusted with your home city and absolutely detest your teammates to leave almost $70 million of guaranteed money on the table. Needless to say, Bradley was taking that money. <laughs> Um, it doesn't make much more sense to secure the financial uh, windfall at the end if things don't work out down the road. Simply demand a trade. Why, hello again, Mr. Durant. That's why there was so little credible buzz about any of this year's top potential free agency. Bill, Levine, Harden, actually leaving their teams. And to solve the changes in this NBA, you can expect most players to continue to resign in or extend with their current teams and figure it out later significantly deflating what used to be a frenzy free agency period. In its plates, however, we've gotten trade demands of blockbuster deals that rival and perhaps exceed the excitement that free agency used to bring. So we're not exactly complaining. Number three, I, I simply put, KD is probably never going to be satisfied. Now, for me, it's easy to think of this when looking at the rent who has requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets after signing a four-year, $198 million extension with the franchise less than a year ago. Murmurs of Durant's discontent reached a forever when contract talks between Brooklyn and Kyrie were briefly at an end pace. But most suspected that Irvin opting into his final year of his deal would keep Durant in Brooklyn alongside his good friend and a partner he chose three summers ago. Instead, as we all know, Durant asked out with the Phoenix Suns and Heat were probably atop his list uh, of preferred destinations. The irony is almost too obvious. Durant has consistently pushed back against the criticism for his decision to leave Oklahoma to join a 73-win Golden State team that we all remember. He pushed back against those who say that his two titles in Golden State are diminished because of their loaded roster, joining the Nets with Irvin and James Harden. Gave Durant an opportunity to be the unquestioned alpha on a potential title team, but that quickly went south due to injuries and an eventual trade demand from Harden. Durant didn't seem too satisfied after winning his titles uh, and finals MVPs as part of a super team. Now he doesn't seem content trying to do it on his own and wants to join one of the last season's number one seed to endure the criticism all over again. It's all confusing from the outset, and maybe you should be. We like to think we understand what's going on within the minds of NBA players, but we truly have no clue. Durant is entitled to seek any situation that he feels will bring him happiness. But as he prepares to leave a franchise for the third time in his career, it's fair to question whether Durant is seeking satisfaction that he'll simply never find. And so, so next up, man, I think is... It's easy to say, uh, it's, it's easy to guess what, what I'm probably going on my, my next one. The, the, the world really wanted Rudy Gobert. Imagine, it's, you know, like, it's, you know, it's really crazy. When I think think about that, man, I was shocked when the deal happened. Um, I, I either debated whether the trade was worth it until we're midnight blue in the face, but this is inarguably a massive haul, one that very few, if any, anticipated in preceding Gobert trade rumors. Also, here's what the Jazz took home the deal. Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Kessler. Um, they took on Leandro Balmoro, um, the number 23 pick in the 2020 draft. He wasn't familiar with that name. Um, Vanderbilt, a uh, 2023 first round pick, unprotected. A 2025 first round pick. A 2027 first round pick. A 2029 first round pick. What? <laughs> for, for Rudy Gobert? Man, this is the deal. I'm trying to think, what, what, is, a, what is Kevin Durant going to command? You know, 
this trade raises the asset price for pretty much any superstar. Like, it, it, it makes me think back to the Lakers when they shipped out Anthony Davis back in 2019, but Davis was 26 year old at the time, while Gobert just turned 30. Not to mention that Davis was near considered a top 10 player in the league. Something Gobert, despite his defensive talents and accolades, has never approached. It's always best when trades work out for both sides, so here's hoping Gobert is a great fit in Minnesota. But if he's not and the Wolves don't end up significantly improving with him, this deal could look pretty rough in a few years from now. That's why the Jazz world now appears to their um, or it's their whether they choose to retool around Mitchell or commence a full rebuild um, by tanking their way into uh, the, the Victor Wabanami uh, sweet stakes. He, he's projected to be a big town player next in the draft. Uh, but, you know, at lastly, number six. The Knicks are okay with being okay, and I guess that's okay for the Knicks. Jalen Brunson's on a four-year, $104 million deal. Okay. Yeah. Mitchell Robinson on a four-year, $60 million deal. I, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, yeah. So, those are just kind of some of my takeaways from the little first week of free agency. You know, it's, it's been a, um, a, a wild ride, especially with the KD news and different aspects, but... You know, as soon as this KD stuff is resolved, I'm expecting it to even pick up more of a certain trade. So I guess we just got to wait to see. But like I said, man, if you're an NBA fan, leave a like on the video, man. Subscribe to the channel um, if you love if you love this type of content. Uh, and it, and it, help, it helps the channel, you know, when you guys like and subscribe to um, the video, man. And leave in the comments some other things that might have surprised you in, in free agency or some things that you're looking forward to going forward. But that's going to be it for me. Yeah.